Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. After invoking the name of any god I could think of, I am now taking the risk or embarking on this episode of Karta Plateau on something that I know nothing about. That is futures and options. Now, futures and options is something which goes on on stock exchanges. These days, you run into people. What do you do? I'm a trader, right? A lot of people have become traders, particularly younger people, especially so in smaller towns. Now, what has happened is SEBI has come out with a detailed 33-page report. They came out with a report in 2023 also. Doesn't look like anybody took that report seriously. Now, what is that report telling us? I will tell you a few things and one reason I still, I'm still daring to talk about this issue, which once again, I know nothing about. One, re one reason is that I will have TCA Sharad Raghavan, who, who's our editor for economics, join in with me to explain the intricacies of it and also a lot of the data points, some of which I will share with you. So first of all, what are the headlines? You've seen some of these in your papers. Surprisingly, there's been very little discussion or debate or concern or frankly alarm about this because SEBI has not been talking about this. SEBI is talking about tightening this. However, this might be a case of bolting this table after all the horses have bolted. Or in fact, I want to use an expression more rude than horses, maybe the name of another species from the general same class of animals, but let me not go there because what kind of people keep on losing money doing one thing, but keep coming back to it. So in fact, if you look at people who've lost money on the exchanges in futures and options business, 75% of them have kept coming back over three years. Now, let me not jump from one issue to the other. Let me give you the basic facts first. Basic facts, tighten your belt. It tells you that between financial year 2022 and 24, that is 22, 23, 24. Between 2022 and 2024, in three financial years, 93% of all Indians who traded in futures and options, 93% of all Indians who traded in futures and options lost money. Together, they lost 1.8 lakh crores or 1.8 trillion rupees. That is something now people are talking about because there's a headline point. Rahul Gandhi has also tweeted on this. Other people in the opposition are saying what was SEBI doing, etc, etc. Average loss for these traders, and this is not a small number of traders, this is 1 crore plus traders, a little over 1 crore, something like 1 crore 13 lakhs. These are individual traders. These are not proprietary firms. Firms which have an office, which have 20, 10, 20 people trading, they are trained people, they understand the markets. Those are proprietary firms. And then there are foreign portfolio investors, which are which is another name in this case, say for hedge funds. So they have they have the expertise, they play with this, they have big computers, they employ math PhDs and statistics PhDs and physics PhDs to figure out the market's behavior and also to assess the behavior of all these tens of millions of Indians, most of them in small towns, who are making their small bets on futures and options markets. But 93% of them have lost money. That's more than one crore people have lost money in futures and option over these three years. Their total loss is 1.8 trillion rupees. Where that money might have gone, we'll give you an idea. Simply because when somebody loses money, somebody makes money. So if 1.8 trillion rupees has been lost, 51,000 crores of that, that is half a trillion rupees, little, little over half a trillion rupees has gone, have gone to intermediaries. It has gone to, it has gone to the stock market where the trade is done. It's gone to the brokers, right? Because without brokers, there can be no business. And it has also gone to, it has also gone to the government because after all, the government collects tax on everything. I will give you a little bit of a percentage. There is this graphic from the 33-page 
SEBI report, this graphic first of all gives you the data, the total amount of transaction costs in the three years, 2022, 2023, 2024. And you can see how, the, how these transaction costs are going up. 2022, 10,047 crores. 2023, 16,982 crores. And 2024, 22,451 crores. A total of about 51,000 crores. Now, if you see how that money is divided, so we are just looking at the data for the division because it's indicative for 2024. That's the latest data. That is the second part of this graphic. So this tells you that the largest share of the transaction costs of 22,451 crore rupees in 2022, the lion's share has gone to brokers, which is 51%, adds up to 11,364 crore rupees, a neat, a neat amount of money in the broker's pockets. The second highest, the second highest is the stock exchange. So National Stock Exchange itself makes a mega profit for doing nothing except for offering its platform. And then you can see because the stock market is making so much money, there is an incentive to keep on, keep on encouraging more trading by creating incentives. That is something that Sharad will explain as we go along. So 4,469 crores or 20% has gone to the NAC where this trading takes place. 15% has gone to Government of India, Securities Transaction Tax. Another 13% has gone to Government of India as GST, so Securities Transaction Tax of 3,454 crores, GST of 2,868 crores, and then and then stamp duties, that is 199 crores. It isn't that much, but it is still something. What this is telling us is it is helping us establish the casino principle. Now, India is not a country where gambling is allowed. All gambling is banned. In fact, even cricket, anytime there is IPL, anytime there is any cricket tournament going on, police goes and randomly catches people because they were betting. It's a tragedy that this country does not legalize betting on which you can collect taxes and you can decriminalize it and take this business activity away from the mafias. Because cricket gambling in India, because it's illegal, is driving the mafias because, it, because there is so much money involved. You can't run casinos in India. In fact, you go to Goa, you want to go to a casino, you have to go on a ship. It's a sham, but you, you just go on a ship because ship is supposed to be a place where you can run a casino, not on the mainland of India. Yet, all of India has not become a casino because this crore plus people have been trading during the stock market trading hours, just buying futures and option contracts in the hope that something will work. The fact is that for 93%, it hasn't worked. All these losses have gone somewhere. Now, 1.8 trillion rupees is the money they have lost. Now, in, in the casino economics, what is it that we say? In the casino economics and reality of the casino, we say somebody loses, a lot of people lose, some people win, but you know what? There is one side that always wins and that is the house. The house always wins. So in this case, the house is the stock market, it's the brokerages and it's the government which gets taxes. So 51,000 crores of all these losses of these small investors have gone to the house. So the house wins. Then the other winners are hedge funds and others. Who do, who do what is called as algorithmic trading? What is algorithmic trading? Again, Sharad will explain to you. But basically what it means is that I am a hedge fund. I am sitting in New York or someplace. I have got these experts. I have got this math, physics, economics, PhDs. I have I've got the most powerful computers. They are looking at all the data coming out of Indian markets and all the behavior of Indian investors. All these tens of millions of investors. It's a lot of data. Based on that, I can figure out how much gumption they have with which stock or which with which futures contracts. When is something likely to go up? When is something likely to come down? And when is it people might lose nerve with something? It's a bit like, if I may simplify it, it's a bit like you, you've heard about it's a season of chess. You've heard about Gary Kasparov and Atali Karpov in the past. Vishwanathan Anand. Magnus Carlsen, any of these great grandmasters of chess. 
you say you put them in front of a supercomputer and let's see who wins so a great grandmaster like that may be able to wrestle with a supercomputer and have a chance what's happening with indian futures and options market is that people like me or forget me people like people like very simple well meaning housewives with a little bit of money 20000 rupees to play within a month 50000 rupees to play within a month they are sitting on the computer and trading so it is putting people like that in front of a super computer so on the one hand gary kasparov or vishwanathan anand versus a super computer on the other hand a mr so and so or mrs so and so in a small town maybe fagwada in punjab maybe tirunelveli some place against a supercomputer having said that when you read this report 33 pages it also tells us a very important thing it tells us that while everybody loses money all indians lo indians lose money after all 93% are losing money every year year upon year as a percentage fewer women have lost money than men so say if 95% men have lost money say 83% or 84% women have lost money nevertheless they've all lost money and this money has gone somewhere else so i will just give you a few highlight points and then we'll call in sharad so i told you 93% of more than 1 crore investors have lost money next 3.5% of all individual traders 3.5% is a lot of people because it's 3.5% of 1 crore 13 lakh indians right so it makes makes for 4 lakh indians so 4 lakh indians over these 3 years have lost an average of hold your breath 28 lakh per person 28 lakh per person all of this includes transaction costs as well since i told you 93% have made losses it follows that 7% have made profits now how much profit have they, have they made only 1% of all of india's investors have made more than 1 lakh rupee profit what is 1 lakh rupees these days 1 lakh rupees is two indigo tickets to goa and maybe maybe three nights in an oyo room for two or with some taxi thro thrown in right that is the kind of profit that these people have made most of these people have made only 1% only 1% the rest have made some profit but maybe in a few thousand so that is namka vaste profits who's made the money that is proprietary traders and foreign portfolio investors so this year for example 61000 has been lost by small traders individual traders in the market where has this money gone this is now net of trading costs this where has this money gone 33000 of this has gone to proprietary traders and 28000 crores has gone to foreign portfolio investors most profits are generated by larger entities that have used trading algorithms that's what sebi tells you in fact if you look at the profits of these two categories that is proprietary traders and fpis 96% of all the profits of proprietary traders are from algorithmic trading and 97% of fpis so you know how the dice is loaded now how does this this algorithm business work before i go into other detail and before sharad joins in i will tell you i will give you an example now there was a fund in new york like a hedge fund called jane fund two of its star traders left to join another fund called millennium fund obviously they got bought out got much better offers offers they couldn't refuse so they went to millennium fund however it seems that they had something of great value that's why jane fund went to court and jane fund said that we had some proprietary information or knowledge which these two traders have taken away with them unethically to millennium fund and they said you should issue an order on them to cease and de desist now the court said in new york before we do that we need to know what that knowledge is this forced jane although jane tried very hard saying this is proprietary information how can we share it in public but the court said you want us to take action you tell us what this information was and they said that this is information on a futures and option based strategy for the markets in india now this fund this fund made a profit of how much in india this fund had made a profit of 1 billion dollars in a year in india now this story got into the economist i also read this story in the economist and then i went googling what are futures and options and 
That's around time, I am sure India's SEBI and others also got alerted that while tens of lakhs, a crore plus lower middle class Indians were just playing this game in this casino and losing money, so much money was being vacuum cleaned or maybe siphoned out. You can imagine either a vacuum cleaner or maybe a more gentle siphon, right? That was all going to these hedge funds and proprietary firms. This is, this is the flag, red flag that SEBI has now raised. What action they will take, I don't know because stock exchanges also like to let this go on because they think futures and options are a way of market discovery, the price discovery and they also broaden the market. Now because I told you India has become a casino like that, how big a casino is this? What if I told you it's the largest casino of its kind in the world? It's not just the largest, largest it is by far the largest. In fact, it's been rising as its percentage of futures and options markets in the whole world. So see this article I'll share with you with the descriptions from FIA.org. FIA stands for Futures Industry Association. It tells you that in 2023, of the 137 billion futures and options contracts signed in the entire world, India accounted for 84.8 billion. That was 61% of all of the world's futures and options contracts India accounted for, which means mostly NSE accounted for. BSE does some stuff, but kafi piche, right? 61%, more than 61% in fact, India accounted for. But see what happens as we come into 2024. This is after SEBI has already produced a report in 2023, raising the red flag, but nobody is deterred. By April 2024, in April 2024, India accounts for 81%. 81% of all the futures and options contracts in the world. In the first quarter of this year, 2024, I will also share a link with you from ICICIdirect.com with the data. In first quarter of this year, India now accounts for 84% of all futures and options contracts in the world. On that note, I will ask my colleague, Sharad Raghman to join in because beyond this, everything seems to be out of out of my syllabus at least. So Sharad, first of all, tell us what are futures and options? So futures and options come under this blank, uh, blanket uh, term called derivatives and why they're called derivatives is because they derive their value from an underlying asset or an index. That's simply why they're called derivatives. Now how futures and options are similar, they've got a very basic similarity. It's basically that two parties, the buyer and the seller, agree that they'll buy or sell that asset at a fixed price at a future date. And that's where the similarities between futures and options lies. The difference is that in a futures contract, you have to go through with the contract, regardless of what the actual price is. If you've set a commitment, price, hai. commitment, hai. you have to go ahead with it. In an option, as the name suggests, you only have the option of going ahead. You can choose not to. But because this puts the seller at a disadvantage that if you don't choose to use the option, then you can just walk away. You have to pay a premium. So futures don't have that premium. So there's no upfront cost to futures, but there is a finality to the contract. In options, you have to pay a premium, but you have the choice not to go ahead. With so, the so for example, you said today that share of company X is a hundred rupees today. I expect it to become 130 in a month. Yes. So I can take an option saying that I have the option of buying this share at 130 rupees in a month. Right. Now to, to put my handkerchief on the seat, yes. as we say, Rumal Rakhto, train ki seat mein, ya bus ki seat mein, I say I am paying 10 rupees upfront. Right. That's my commitment to show that this is a genuine deal. Yes. But Maybe in a month, the share price comes to 90 and I don't want it. Yes. Right. Then what happens? You still lose the premium. 10 rupees. Yes. 10 rupees you lose, yep. but, but not more. And what happens with future? What, how do you lose money or how, how do you make money? In futures, then you have to purchase it at the price that you set, whatever the contract was at. So now if the actual price comes out lower, then you've technically lost because you're paying a higher price than what the real price is. 
But if the price rises above that level, then you've bought that share at a cheaper rate than what everybody else in the market would have to at that point. And how do you make money in options? That is, if you say I will buy share X at 130 and it's actually gone up to 150. Right. Because for every option and every futures contract, for every buyer, there is a seller. There is a seller. Right. Yes. So in each deal, somebody will lose and somebody will gain. Right. All right. So uh, where, have people, where have people lost more money in futures or in options? Oh, in options by far. In fact, and uh, I have the data here, uh, the, in options in the last, in the three years that SEBI was looking at, people lost money every single year and this amount increased every year. So in 2021-22, it was 37,500 crore that they lost. This went up to 59,500 crore in 2022-23, which then further increased to 77,800 crore in 2023-24. So that's losses grew by 107% over this period in options. options. But in futures, the first two years, people lost money. So there was a 3,000 crore uh, and just 3,000 crore loss. I say just, just in Small relation. change, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. We are dealing with trillions, yeah. Right. So 3,000 crore loss in the first year, which became uh, 6,000 crore loss in the second year. But in the third year, they overall made profits of 3,000 crore. So, yeah. so just to put this in perspective, the scale of this operation in perspective, in April, sorry, in March this year, the value of all contracts, future and options contracts signed in India, the value, hold your breath, was 1.3 trillion Dollars. Now, it doesn't mean that much money exchanges hands. That is, somebody can put 10 rupees and bid for 100 rupees, 150 rupees or whatever, but the value of the contracts was $1.3 trillion. Right. To get the perspective right, the size of India's GDP is about $3.6 trillion. Yes. The entire size, the market cap of all of India's stock market is $5 trillion. This is $1.3 trillion worth of contracts in a month. Now, don't worry. It's not as if all of this is going to exchange exchange hands. It's not as if all this money is going to be flying around. That is why it's called futures and options. And you are telling us that people lose or gain a lot more money in options than in futures. Oh, absolutely. And more often than not, they're losing money in, in options. And futures is just a smaller part. In fact, uh, I will tell you out of the out of the 1.13 crore individual FNO traders, 91.3 traded only in options. 91.3 percent. Yeah, they play high stakes. Correct. Why? There's no fun doing a low risk thing, na? Pagal uh, full 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 low. Absolutely. But, but they're doing it without knowledge. And that's actually the the profile of these traders makes a very, very interesting and kind of alarming reading. Before that, the number that you said about 1.81 lakh crore being the loss, that number is adjusted against the profit that is made. So the actual total loss that has been made was, I will just tell you, 2.06 lakh crore. Yeah. And then you minus out the profits from that and the net figure that, you that's have the is... Profit that, that's, that's the profit that those super smart Harvard material that are, yes. uh, of 7% that have made. 7% of this demographic who made profit. So that amounts to about 25,000 something crores. So if you net that, then the net loss is 1,81,000 1, crores. Right. Also, I see this in, in demographics, something very interesting. Number one, I noticed that the number of really young people is rising. I mean, don't they have any work to do? They sit at home and trade or do they sit at work and trade? I mean, next time I walk around this office, I'm <laughs> going to watch people over people's shoulders to see what they're doing. Unlikely any journalists uh, have the gumption to do this either, but I'm joking. Below 30 was 31% in 2023. Right. It's now 43% in 2024. Yes. This is really, really amazing. The other thing that this data tells us is that the number of futures and options traders is now rising above those who deal with mutual funds. Oh, yes. So this is a culture shift. and It's a gambling culture shift, you think? Oh, 100%. Because, uh, and that's exactly what... 
these exchanges are also trying to encourage and i say exchanges but mainly it's the national stock exchange NSE. yes the nsc because nsc in these 3 years nsc because 20% is their profit right 51000 crores is the transaction cost of all these deals so 10% of 51000 is more than 10000 crores so more than 10000 crores nsc or doing nothing, just sitting in the corner and smoking the hookah and letting the computers run, right? I'm I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying they are smoking the hookah. Smoking is a bad thing, but that was just a metaphor, right? The khali bade kuch nahi kare, paisa something is printing money for you. So ten thousand crores for an exchange. Exchanges are not designed to profiteer, right? Yes, uh, because that is even fundamentally that's not the role of the exchanges. That would be a conflict of interest. Yeah, in in this case, therefore. It's a vested interest that yes. NSC should keep this going. And have they been encouraging this? Absolutely, they have in terms of just as you would if you gave an addict more opportunities to use the substance they're addicted to, then that is an encouragement, right? So NSC has increased the number of indices that it puts up for, that you can buy options and uh, futures of. So earlier, there were there was only one index the the benchmark index but now you can buy a an, a futures or an options on every single working day of the week yeah and given half a chance they do it they do it over the weekend so Saturday, Saturday, it Saturday. over the weekend so it's a bit like you know you go to one of these uh, not very sophisticated bars where the barman or the waiters keep looking at people's glass so when the glass is about only about one third left, so about two thirds empty. Somebody goes and gives you a refill yes. because you want your turnover, and something right. like that's happening again. Very important data point 75% of the people who've lost this money, 75% of all these individual traders in India in futures and options market report their annual income to be below five lakhs. It could be your security guard, it could be your driver, right. It right. could be it, it could be the guy who's delivering your food from Zomato. It's 75 percent are below five lakhs a year. That is about below 40,000 rupees a month. So right. this is not even middle class. These are working classes. Absolutely. And 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 the other thing is that 75 percent people. I 75 percent figure keeps coming back. 75 percent people keep coming back despite losing so they've kept coming yes. for three years despite losing if this isn't a casino fixation a gambling fixation what is i'm i'm careful because i know that speculation is a is an essential part of stock markets price discovery futures trading is an essential part of it right. but this kind of mass algorithmic stuff stuff which is vulnerable to algorithmic trading you're just gun fodder in front of people super smart people who've got a battery of machine guns and cannons and drones etc 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 you haven't got a hope in hell Absolutely. your odds are seven percent and even at seven percent only only one only even out of seven percent only six out of hundred will make more than one lakh right and uh, apart from that it's i mean you think that okay fine people might believe that we're going to come back next year as well to do this because I've learned my lessons here. I've, I've become better at trading. But no, that's not the case. What the SEBI data shows is that only 8.3% of the traders who came back in the third year after losing money in the first two years actually made any profit. All the rest of them lost again in the so, third so year. So it, it, there's no story here of third time lucky, right? Not at all. Because one, the house always wins. So the house will get its cut anyway, right? Nirmala Sitaraman will get her cut as taxes, which is a good thing. At least it goes to the government. NSE will get its cut, right, for just providing it platforms. Stamp duty will go to the government and brokers will get the lion's share of it, yes. almost a half of it. So this keeps the entire stock market business actually working. 51,000 rupees right. over three years. is a hell of a lot of money. Now, before Sharad tells you what SEBI is proposing, to do. I will also share with you this one graphic again from the SEBI paper. Please see this. This tells you in which state have people lost more or less. Now, as you might imagine, maybe Maharashtra, the highest number, that's 18.8%. .8%. Gujarat comes 
Second, I thought the Gujaratis would be making all the money. Very interestingly, an, another state of some size, not a small state, not like Haryana, right? Another state of some size is definitely much smarter. So look at Tamil Nadu, only 3%. They only account for 3% of these losses. Karnataka also has the money, but also has Bangalore. So people right. know how to use computers, I presume, a bit better. Plus, I think... Also, they are smarter and they are more busy. So, they have le less time to be doing this, this playing casino at home. Yeah. So Karnataka accounts for 4% of all the losses. But see this chart. This tells you the behavior patterns in the cities. Again, the data point is very important that bulk of these people, in fact, a large percentage, if Sharat can find that data point, he'll tell you, a large number of them come from small towns, not from what is called as the B30 cities, the big 30 cities in India. So a lot of them are in small towns, villages, places like that. You might say that's a case of equity cult growing, but frankly, this is not equity cult if you're doing it without knowledge. And you're losing, your odds are 93 is to 7. Then it's not equity cult. You are better off buying mutual funds. In that case, it's a gambling madness. Right. So that's 72.2% that are coming outside of the top 30 cities by population. Can you imagine? So top 30 cities is a lot of cities that you know. 72% so are coming from beyond there. Now the same graphic which I just used to tell you which state accounts for more of these losses. Please also see per capita losses and see how that, how that worm moves. It's very interesting. The highest per capita losses are actually for the state of Telangana. That is nearly 1.97 lakh per investor from Telangana. So there is something going on in Hyderabad and Telangana that we don't understand. Right. Now that said, we mentioned earlier that a bulk of these investors or these players, I would call them not investors, are coming from small towns. Small towns means towns beyond the B30, the big 30 cities in India. Right. Sharad, uh, can you get the exact data point? Yes. So, uh, in 2023-24, 72.2% of them came outside of the top 30 cities by population. So, these are the cities which have smaller populations, obviously, the smaller cities around India. And this is up from 68.1% in 2021. So, that means an increasing amount are coming from these smaller cities. And there's a particularly interesting feature uh, in this data, which is that a little more than half of all FNO traders in FY24 were from just four states. That's Maharashtra, Gujarat, UP and Rajasthan. But UP, of these big states, UP has seen the most remarkable growth out of all of the bigger states. So it saw a 186% growth in the number of FNO traders over this period. So, Faisabad, Banda, Aligarh, maybe Safai, Bolaim Singh Yadav's yes. village or, you know, overgrown village. Any of these places now have this going on. Wherever Absolutely. there is connectivity, this is going on. And this gives you such a great profile and idea of who the typical trader is. He's young, he's less than 30. He or more, she. Or he or she. But more often than not, it's he. It's That's what the, yes. the, yes. the data yes. shows. So, and more often than not... If it's a he, it's more likely to be the loser. To be losing money, absolutely. So, he is young, he's less than 30, he's largely earning less than 5 lakhs and de almost definitely earning less than 10 lakhs. The data shows that 94% declared income less than 10 lakhs. He's more likely to be from a small town or a small city and he's, of course, most likely to be male. And a lot of them are probably looking at these influencers and the stuff they are saying on Absolutely. YouTube, etc. or Instagram. So there is, it's now become quite a, quite a, I'm using that expression carefully, quite a toxic ecosystem. Very much so. And SEBI is taking note of this. They, they send notices to various unregistered uh, influencers, people who are not registered. Basically, they say that you register with us. And then you can give advice. But without registering with us, you cannot be giving people advice on what to buy and at what price and things like that. So it has been sending out very stern warnings and things like that. But it's really not stopping this activity. So in conclusion, tell us what is it that SEBI is now doing about this? Ah, absolutely. So 
SEBI in July, they came out with a consultation paper saying that we're going to take various steps and all of you industry bodies and everybody involved, please tell us what you think. Uh, so one of the steps was, again, when you're dealing with an addict, you have to cut them off. And so one of them was to reduce the number of indices that are available for options. So that they're saying they're going to rationalize, the word they use was rationalize, they didn't say to how many, but they're going to reduce the amount of drug that is being put out. Uh, the second thing is they're going to make the drug more expensive. So the lot size, the minimum contract size that could be bought, they want to increase it from the current band of 5 to 10 lakh to 15 to 20 lakhs and then 20 to 20, uh, 20 to 30 lakhs over a phased manner. So they're almost going to triple the, the lot size that you, the minimum contract size that you can buy. And the third is that they're going to try to dissuade you from taking loans to buy these uh, options. So what they found was that a lot of the premiums that were being charged on options, the payment was not upfront. The, the, the seller was saying that you can pay me in uh, a little later. So a lot of people were buying these options without actually having the money with them and then they would borrow. I mean, that, that, that sounds so much like Yudhishthir in, in Mahabharat. Right. Because basically putting, put, put, putting at stake what didn't belong to him. Absolutely. And so Sevi is saying that no, that has to stop. You have to, you have to take upfront uh, premium payment. So then you can buy only with what you have. So these, these still, the industry has been pushing back against this very hard and as you've explained, the amount of profits they're making, make it clear why they're pushing back against this activity. But SEBI is expected, they haven't yet finalized the rules. So but what you're saying is industry is pushing back at this reform. Yes. They don't want it. They don't want yeah, it. Just think about it, you know, one more aspect. If these FPIs are making so much money, last financial year, 24, as it ended, they made 28,000 crore plus. That is three and a half billion dollars taken out of India. Right? Okay. So you're vacuum cleaning, not just these tens of millions of Indians, but also taking profits out of India. Okay. Uh, and somehow we don't seem to be hurting because each one is losing a little bit. Right? right. So the number, because so many people are suffering the pain or some bit of pain, it's not become a political issue. Absolutely. The, and the, the numbers are still limited right now. But uh, as you mentioned, even the Congress is now taking it up. It will become a political issue. But you know, I tell you the other thing about casinos and gambling, not from going there, but from reading about them, that nobody goes to a casino or gambles, ever wants to admit that they are losing money. Right? Oh, absolutely. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to confess to being a loser. And that's what the house and the smarter people benefit from and that's what's going on here it's such a such a stunning finding and such stunning data also check out sharad's story we will share a link with you